<laughs> All good. They'll come, they'll come in, Tim. Don't you worry. Yes. Yes. And if not, we can do it. We can I'm just... talking to myself anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so am I, mate. Tell me about it. Fuck me. I haven't heard myself speak so much. Uh, my missus, I said to her, wait, you wait till we get to England. I said, I'll be a different person because we've been living in Germany for eight years. Yeah. I said, you wait till I get back. I said, I annoy myself. And um, I just, I'm sick of my own voice, man, especially over the last few months of doing all this, talking to 54 people all the time. Normally, I just talk to her and maybe one or two phone calls in a day. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I was sick of my own voice. Oh, no, it's, it's a good voice, man. Don't put it down. <laughs> <laughs> for your voice for radio. Yeah. Yeah, you got a face for radio, Chav. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, Tim, what have you been up to? Have you been doing anything, anything exciting? Projects? Yeah, I mean, I've uh, I've been doing a, a, a reggae album, actually. Um, I'm doing a project um, which is basically uh, doing sort of unusual covers and getting um, some really good reggae singers um, to, to sort of vocal them. So I've been trying to put them together, like, as authentic sounding as possible, like, for 70s roots kind of reggae versions of um like we did like a fairport convention song which we had um we've got carol thompson vocally who was sort of one of the uh foremost uh sort of lovers rock vocalists of the 80s um and um, yeah, it's a really good little project and uh, you know hopefully um you know it'll sort of bear fruit in terms of getting paid <laughs> <laughs> you never know. No, it's a, it's a really nice thing to be involved in. And um, then I'm just sort of um, getting on with um, Doghouse Derelict's tracks, which is, that's kind yeah, of yeah. My, my, re, my sort of really kind of organic, uh, sort of live playing kind of band, um, which we're sort of constantly releasing stuff. And, uh, and I'm doing more kind of um nft stuff funnily enough um right i've got a um a really good mate of mine um there's a great producer called tommy d who um produced one of my albums um back in sort of the late 90s um has started um he started he started it a couple of years ago now so he was really one of the early adopters and he um and this is like this is my interest in it has purely come from this from being involved in in meta beats um so that's led to me kind of being i mean i'm still really kind of at the at the early stages with it but i have been sort of inquiring you know and, and sort of opening up to what's going on in the space and um so like uh, this a good friend of mine tommy d he had He's got this label called Token Tracks, which he's had going for um, a couple of years, as it turns out. Uh, he's got some like serious kind of um, people on board, and um, nice. so, uh, I started a little project, which is maybe. I mean, he's kind of inspired me to to do like uh, an album, which I could maybe put out through his label uh, as NFTs. Um, so I've kind of got a kind of little art sort of angle on it, and um, and I've started kind of these uh, collection tracks, you know. Um, so yeah, a lot of stuff, really, a lot of stuff going on. Man, you're never going to stop anyway because you're so talented and that. Um, but man, well, it must, it must be nice to be doing the another yeah. NFT thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of it's all in the service of me trying to get a handle on you know what the hell's going on with it you know? <laughs> <laughs> for an old duffer like myself you know it's kind of uh is you know it, it takes some doing you know but i'm i'm getting there gradually and bit by bit and um uh, i'm still like i say very early stages but um 
you know, it's it's obviously a medium. It's a new medium, which I love yeah. about it. And um, you know, it's I I I've, I've just instinctively feel, and I think it's easy to tell that it will uh, kind of you know it's going to be around you know from now on as a medium. I think. Yes, definitely. Uh, and uh, are, you, are you collecting NFTs, Tim? Well, I haven't really started. I've got a, I've got a board ape fat club. Um, but just, we just wonder got who got into those. We just got rugged on it. Oh, it's one of those. The dude's like, it's, it's just like, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. And you're like, well, can you just give us a contract then? Because we're all buzzing with it. Nah, and he's just got silent. <laughs> but it's just like. Come on, dude. You, all you got to do is hand over the projects. You just get raw. It's river. It's just yeah. like, but hey. I mean, it's as good a concept as uh, any other that I, as, as I can see around, really, isn't it? And uh, so, yeah, yeah, that's a shame. That's a shame. But no, I haven't. I haven't collected any more yet. So. No, you, you got. Yeah. Um, like I said, there's, there's, there is a. That's why I said to you with that one, because it was so cheap as well. Um, yeah, yeah. That you're still going to like what you got. So that was a pro- that's one of the things with it. But um, yeah, um, yeah. There, it, there'll be people, anything you you know, anything you need to know, you can ask me. And if I don't know, I know someone in here who will know. So yeah. uh, we're, yeah. trying, we're trying to um, set up, uh, well, we have set up in in the bottom left in that column on the Discord. I know you're getting used to all this. We have got a useful info list with neuter Ethereum, protect yourself, scam reports. You know things where you can um, and suggestions like, man, if you need to know, oh man, what the hell is the blockchain? Yeah. Blah blah blah. We you can put it in there. We'll put ways of finding the information in there. Right, okay, yeah, that's really useful. Yeah, Yeah. No, we just want it to be so that, man, everyone's got to understand everything. So if they come popping in here, they can mm-hmm. sort of like just ask any questions, find anything out, because that's what it's all about, helping each other out in here, you know that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, um, I've, uh, you know, I've really noticed um, all over that generally... Um, Obviously, there's always, um, it's quite early stages. I mean, obviously, some people have been at it for a while, but it's still early enough stages that a lot of new people are coming on board. And the general attitude of of uh, sort of um, people universally um, in different forums about it seems to be really kind of friendly to, to newcomers, you know, which is really good. Yeah, man, that's awesome. I've really experienced that, really experienced that, because... Uh... Yeah, I don't know. It's it's of course it's a new thing, but and younger people doing it. You know, I've I've come across a lot of the younger people kind of their brains are just so in in the process of how to make everything work behind this this screen we're looking at. I mean, uh, not, absolutely, not necessarily adapting it how it's going to come out and work in the real world. Mm. You know, I've had some. Some people sort of make suggestions of things like, yeah, man, it's a really good idea in here, but yeah. you try and organise that outside outside of the of a computer s- screen and get a thousand people to turn up at one place at the same time, and you know it's a suddenly a different thing. So uh, yeah, it's right. it's really exciting space, man. But it is it is funny the different age gaps and how people think about you know just working inside web free and that it's not yeah. in real life sort of thing it's it's a crazy space man but really exciting to 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 look at you know as well definitely definitely and i mean as a case in point you know when i was uh first looking into you know nfts buying nfts and you know um following little tutorials about it uh i had my 10 year old son <laughs> sitting there watching them with me um, and he was like, do you know what, Dad? I'm going to take some notes for you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> he was, he was, no, he was taking all these really comprehensive notes for me, you know, about it. And, you know, which is, he just seemed to like instinctively grasp it all. Um, whereas, you know, my, my old adult brain was kind of <laughs> freaking into action in its customary slow pace. You know what I mean? But, um, 
Yeah. I mean, <laughs> There you go. Well, yeah. we, we kind of have to, I think we have to kind of work back with some of the new stuff. And like, right, hang on, now does this relate to what I've done before to get a, a bit of a connection to it and stuff, you know? But, I mean, my daughter, she's 19, and her and her mates are talking NFTs all the time, you know? She, she hasn't mm-hmm. buying her and all that, but she knows everyone who does. And I think the younger generation with the crypto and everything, it's always going to be here now. So your boy will probably hoover up all that info and be one step ahead of his mates, you know? Definitely. definitely. I mean, it really, you know, one kind of uh, comparison that has struck, uh, that struck me about it is because, um, you know, the sort of games that he play and uh, he plays and, uh, you know, it's all about, you know, like with uh, Fortnite. Um, buying different skins and stuff like that sort of strikes me as is almost uh, it's a similar kind of concept but this is like the grown up the sort of more more real version of that really um, um, do you get me on that I mean is yeah yeah for sure I mean it it, yeah. it, it does it it's no boundaries to the age really it's this kind of this metaverse thing and uh, yeah and we're yeah. all we're all digital anyway, you know. Even you know, going back to the Atari and the, the grandstand and the sort of little sticks and the dots, beep beep beep. You know, we were actually around for gaming. So uh, even now, it's just even <laughs> evolving all the time. But it's something you can get into even at our age because it's always been around, isn't it? You know. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, still waiting for the day for uh, you know Fortnite to. To have NFT skins, um, yeah, they, right. they feel like they're so close. They've got their own. They've got their own currency. You know, they're doing these limited runs and stuff like that. That's right. So, yeah, yeah, imagine if if it's all all migrates to the blockchain. Well, well that stuff's going to come on. It, well, it's here, isn't it? Let's face it. The yeah. Well, right. I mean, that's what mass adoption looks like, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's um, these crazy. But then again, I was sitting there looking at the avatars we've got, you know, and kind of having seen them move and everything, and you know, it's like, well, yeah. and there's people just someone's just created them for us. So, and I've got a 360 one now, which I will reveal to everyone one day. <laughs> Where I was just my jaw just drops. I said to the guy, "Do you think can he spin a 360 that camera around it?" So, well, you can do like a 180 axis sort of left to right and uh, round and round the circle sort of thing and all this. So, man, next day he sent me one. I'm not quite sure how to use it yet because it's, yeah, I, I don't know if it needs music on it. It's something you just need to stare at to watch all the light reflecting off it and the, the technology of it. So, I'm not sure how I'm going to reveal it yet, but, man, all the technology for, this, for the gaming and stuff now is... Is mental. Yeah, I mean, this is um, again. So it's all going to be a revelation to me when I when I kind of uh, get involved more, you know, and see and see uh, and more, you know, learn more about the met- metaverse itself. Because you know, I mean, it's quite a concept, really. Um, for you know, coming straight into it, it's. Uh, it's uh, you know it's <laughs> it's not easy to understand for somebody like me. I mean, I'm even sort of um, you know, I mean, I'm even sort of slightly older than than a lot a lot of people here probably. I mean, I'm uh, um, I'm actually what you call Generation Jones, which is sort of like it's sort of a boomer. It's the it's the tail end of the boomers really that uh, <laughs> that. Uh, but are more like Gen X's, you know, Gen X's. And, uh, you know, we're called Generation Jones, apparently. So, you know, I'm a, it's, uh, it's all quite fresh, you know, and I've got my, my own very well-worn ways of thinking um, and doing stuff, you know, and uh, it's really nice to be, for something to come along and, and, and sort of shake, shake me out of it, basically. Well, I think it's exciting again. It's, it is like, um, to me, it is a bit like the, the, the music scene, you know. whenever Whatever your scene was before the rave scene, the, the mod thing, the ska thing, the northern soul thing, you know, the rare groove thing, the hip-hop thing, and then the rave thing. You always, 
being part of something exciting. And then the Ray thing was the thing that went on to be the massive thing, you know. And this yeah. kind of feels a bit like that again. Like, man, there's this real cool thing. You can just write music, like white labels, put them out there, see what happens. If you get rid of them, you can sell more. And if it gets really big, people want it and it gets goes up in value because there's only a certain amount of them pressed up. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and the really exciting thing about it as well as well for for music producers is that you know being as it is it's it, rather than an actual musical revolution it's like a technological one so the music it's like everybody really is is a sort of into everything these days you know I mean everyone's it's not about you know one particular uh, section of music or style of music. You know, I mean, it's a, you can go and you can do anything. You can do absolutely anything, which obviously someone with, uh, you know, you know, well, anybody who obviously loves any type of music, but, you know, for somebody like myself who, you know, I've dabbled, you know, in a lot of different types of music and with a lot of different artists and, you know, I play a lot of different instruments and, uh, and it's just, um, you know, it's it's a real, but it feels that, you know, I've always been kind of cautioned all, all through my kind of musical life, really, uh, against being too kind of eclectic, because it's just going to confuse people. But I feel that this is kind of a license to be like that, um, which is really exciting, you know, um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> so and also, um, and also, it's lovely. It's, it's, it's exciting to be um, to you know to to sort of feel like um, you know because the last sort of ten years, um, it's been kind of more and more of a sort of struggle to earn money from music. Obviously, the labels haven't got as much money as they did. Uh, yeah. You know, it's it's you got to really diversify and just really fucking. I've had to sort of, uh, you know, just go on the road for, for you know, just. I mean, it's you know, everything's kind of suffered as the the, the result of the amount of time I've spent on the road. Uh, yeah. But this is like another another avenue um, where I can. I feel like I can bring, you know, everything I've got to offer together and uh, bring to bear on it and uh you know um just have another you know have a have another few cracks at the whip if you know what i mean <laughs> oh, no, no, for, for sure yeah, for sure for sure it's the same with me i mean don't get me wrong i love the dj and that but as you get older and that and the traveling all the time and it got to the point where you have to do these gigs like you say because that's your bread and butter and you can't get out of that cycle to produce music to sell it to make money out of it so you just get caught in this trap of right well i've got to just keep going out on the road all the time you know um, so to have like you say to have this this new platform um mm. and just just so that everyone knows this tim tim is uh like he's amazing and i said we, we went to the studio to do some work and he said should i bring any instruments and i said uh what, what can you play and he said um uh i'm not very good on the harmonica <laughs> and that was it <laughs> so so like he, you can do this space is made for you man honestly the um we've got another partnership uh metabeats with this uh true crypto uh crime and uh um, oh, yeah. Yeah, they they want us to do some some music for their NFTs, and the, it's going to be perfect for you because they just want like some eight some of its eight second long sinister set of scene strings and pads like oh, a, right. a movie and that. So there's going to be stuff that's just going to be made in heaven for you, um, and that's to me this is what I love about uh, the MetaBeats thing. It's going to be a thing like that where people will come to us and say, oh, man, I want some music for that. I said, well, look, you can choose whatever you want or that's the sort of thing that I know Tim would knock out easy and it's his strong field. And, man, it's going to be real fun like that. Because, um, that's great. Yeah, that's that's my plans for everything, you know, just to, to keep spreading our wings and, 
everyone involved uh, in the community to pull together and help each other, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah. It's, uh, it's certainly, you know, I mean, when, I, when you asked me to get involved, um, I um, was, uh, you know, I, I knew absolutely nothing about NFTs. Um, and just from you describing it, you know, um, you know, sort of an outline of what's going on. I thought, well, you know, um, I don't know, but you know, I'll have, I'll I'll give it a punt. <laughs> and then uh, really sort of enjoyed the process of um, of doing it. And, um, so I can't, actually, I can't remember where I'm going with this comment. <laughs> what were you saying? I was uh, I was going to make a point. I think it's a real sort of on that the freedom of no styles and stuff. And you know, you were like, uh, Well, when I come to you, you said, Yeah, I'll have it go. And literally, you picked it up and you were like, Man, I'm enjoying this now. How many more do you need? Sort of thing like that. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, so, um, and what I find now is that it's something, uh, you know, so you've obviously, you know, you know, there's work to be done in in the field, you know, and it's not it's not going to be something that's you know instantly going to you know sort your financial problems out. But you know, it's definitely something that's going somewhere, and um, that has inspired me to just sort of want to want to keep being involved. Um, so yeah, so that's it. So so I'm in. <laughs> just keep me. Keep me fucking posted, mate. That's brilliant. So, um, Tim, how did how did you get how did you get into? I guess I will go back to um, how did you how did you get into the world of Leroy Thornhill? Um, I see on your bio, you know, a ch- you had a chance encounter with Liam from Prod and. Um, you know, that led to you working on the Invaders Must Die pretty um extensively. Is is that how you came to know Leroy? Actually, no, it isn't. I mean, um I've sort of um we've kind of bumped into each other along the way, um, in very small ways. Uh, you know, I I remember obviously because you know, Leroy's sort of uh somebody that most of us have sort of heard of. Um and um, I remember meeting you, Leroy, at, G- at Glade Festival back in yeah. the days. I was um, I was playing with uh, Hybrid. Do you remember them? It's like a yeah. Break. And I was I was playing with Hybrid, and we were you were at Glade the Glade Festival, and we were there. And um, then also I met you at uh, Cameron's studio, Cameron McVeigh's studio. Yeah, and yeah. And before that. Um, but we never had that sort of connection through the prodigy. Um, but more recently, um, obviously, uh, with our mutual friend, um, Dino, who's kind of, uh, who sort of made the intro really, didn't he? And, uh, so yeah, so it's just really good to, you know, have a solid reason to, to hook up, you know, um, because when I, when I did the stuff with the they were you I'm were pretty sure we met with the dub when you were playing with the dub pistols i'm sure i've been around a couple of times when you were doing yeah, something we met a couple of people <laughs> a couple of times then and we met last year at um at mucky weekender i think as well mm-hmm. and, uh, so yeah there's been these kind of uh, little disparate times dotted around um but it wasn't until this year that we've kind of uh, done any work together really so um yeah, which is uh, which is which has been a journey already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I mean, you, you've got you've worked with so many um, so many people across so many different genres. Um, are, yeah, are you currently working with anyone, or um, are, are we totally devoted to MetaBeats at at this point in time? What's um What's on the cards at the moment? Yeah, well, I've got, I've still got an involvement with um, Tom Finley from 
Grugelmeier there, because um, I was uh, I was part of uh, I, I toured with Grugelmeier for a couple of uh, for a couple of years um, after my sort of first sort of couple of albums involvement with them, um, and uh, then I sort of went on to sort of write a load of stuff with them, and then out of the pair of the two, Andy Cato and Tom Finley, Tom and I always sort of maintain this working relationship and we've uh, started a band called Sugar Daddy which um, is still going uh, we put one album out um, it's not it's not very easily available anymore uh, but we've kind of dotted, we've done sort of twelves and uh, stuff dotted around and we're still kind of uh, talking about doing stuff at the moment um, and got ideas on the go um, but apart from, well, so I've got that, and uh, I've got this the reggae project that I mentioned, which is myself and uh, another producer called Paul Sim, who sort of uh, worked a lot with Cam uh, Leroy. Um, <laughs> and, uh, so it's me and him who are kind of doing doing that um, with sort of various singers, basically, and. Uh, then um, I've got my own band, Doghouse Derelicts, which is uh, it's just like a real... The trouble with that band is that it's so hard to pitch it because well, there's so many influences is in, in there um, that, you know, you've got to come and see it. And when people are put in front of it, everybody gets it. You know, it makes sense. But when I'm trying to pitch it to people, it's kind of like... Well, you know, it's like a sort of uh, sort of hip hop, country, funk, soul kind of <laughs> baggy kind of thing. You know, it just sounds totally chaotic. But anyway, I'm kind of doing, we're kind of constantly putting stuff out, and uh, we're gigging a lot. There's a we've got a live band, and uh, we've got a load of festivals on this year. Um, so that takes care of that side. But uh, and. Um, Getting into just a lot of uh, electronic music making just, um, you know, uh, by myself at the moment, um, which I'm finding really, really kind of great, really, what's the word, you know, just uh, a great thing to do. Um, so I'm having a real kind of revival on that side of things. So, you know, it's kind of, a, it's a real spread about thing. I mean, I get bored. If I do one thing, I get bored very easily. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's evident in your in your bio, man. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you've got the self-taught guitarist, bassist, drummer, and classically trained brass and piano player. Like, um, what what did you start with there? Uh, I started actually with the piano when I was kind of uh, about six or seven, but um, I didn't really take to it then i didn't really take to stuff until i uh got my own guitar when i was about nine so it was really kind of guitar um i started teaching myself when i was about nine and then um when i was at school i, I got taught trumpet and piano again from age 11. um and um yeah and then when i and then i left school pretty early i left school when i was 15 and um I taught myself the drums because all I really wanted to do then was play guitars or drums. I wanted to be in a band because that was cool. Playing the trumpet and pl being in an orchestra wasn't that cool, you know. Um, but then I kind of came back to brass playing and stuff um, when I realised that it, you know, it was useful, you know. And uh, and uh, yeah, so t it took it from there. So. Um, so I taught myself kind of guitars and drums, and um, I think that I sort of think that they're the things I'm best at, really. Um, apart from, well, maybe you know, trumpets getting up there as well, trumpet and trombone. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long story. Man. It's a really long story, and I. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's did, did you do stuff with Amy? Did you? Yeah, I played, um, I did a brass arrangement for a tune on her first album, a tune called Take the Box, 
Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, man, she was so gifted, right? She. Yeah, yeah, she was. Yeah, um, yeah. Amazing, amazing sound, the music, the musical sound that era. You know, when I love it when bands capture timeless music where you, you literally couldn't tell what period it it was written. You know, if it was re- replicating something from the 50s, 60s, whatever it was, you can tell that her music weren't written back then, you know what I mean? It was amazing. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, pff, what, a, what a tragedy. And um, yeah, I'm sure she would have gone on to do some amazing stuff. Uh, so um, God bless her. Yeah. Yeah. Trav, did we have any questions for, for Tim from anyone writing in or anything today? Uh, yeah, actually, Heather sent me a, a question um, for you, Tim. Uh-huh. She says, um, you've had the opportunity to produce and play with an eclectic variety of genres. You started out with punk and have worked with so many outfits from above and beyond to Amy Winehouse. Is there a space, genre, medium where you feel most at home playing or producing it? I was really, um, I was like a massive P-Funk fanatic, you know, like anything to do with Funkadelic Parliament, George Clinton and all of that. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm very comfortable sort of trying to do... Um, stuff like that has definitely got a sort of authentic vibe of that lot um which is kind of it's quite it's quite hard to get right but um i do kind of find that something very easy to slip into and um so i always try and you know very most of the time i try not to do it because it feels like it's um, it's too little of a challenge, you know. So I'm kind of at the moment, but um, you know, I do still love you know all those Parliament records and a- anything to do with that bunch of people. You know, there's so, so many bands that they had, but um, so yeah, so you know, I do do kind of uh, quite kind of brass led, but really kind of. Uh, synth heavy bassline type of stuff um, a lot still um, yeah. and I did a lot of uh, library music um, which is kind of what they call well production music they call now which is, which is uh, increasingly you know a lot of musicians have been doing that which is sort of basically doing stuff for libraries that for repeated use for films and TV and stuff. Um, and you do kind of themed albums. So I kind of, I trot out a kind of a, a funk, a funk kind of a brass led kind of album. Uh, I can trot out one of those once in a while and um, it kind of feeds that, that, you know, whole avenue of earning a living basically um Mm -hmm. so when i'm doing other when i'm doing my own music i tend to kind of steer away from that and try and do um, something a little bit more you know a little bit less obvious and more interesting um so i like to keep myself challenged basically i was gonna say um i don't know about anyone else but uh i'm feeling tired um Tim, do you do any sleeping or eating? I know you like. Uh, <laughs> I know you like your. Um, what were the biscuits we had? Oh, oh, uh, oh God, yeah. What were they? Uh, they were like. Oh, what were they? <laughs> Yorkshire tea. Can't remember. York- what <laughs> it was some some biscuit, of- biscuit flavored tea. Yeah, Tim it was a was- biscuit flavored tea. <laughs> you know when you, you know right. when. You, a biscuit and it breaks off when you're dunking it in your tea and it sort of leaves that flavour of biscuit in your tea. 
You can, in England, you can actually buy that tea now. Tim introduced me to it when we were in the studio. You're still surviving on that. Well, do you know what? I've, that was my first... I found that in the supermarket there <laughs> in Devon. And I've been trying to find that ever since. I can't find it here up in, up in Yorkshire where I am. I mean, obviously, you know, it's Yorkshire tea. <laughs> They, they somehow think it's not on, you know. To sort yeah, they of, keep it away from the Yorkshire people because they know how much damage it can do. It's so yeah. strong. <laughs> you can paint your fence in that with that stuff. It's so strong. <laughs> but Sainsbury's have it. There you go. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I'm, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm going to find another Sainsbury's because the one I go to hasn't got it. So, you know. Yeah, I think they probably think it's... Uh, you know, it's, it's blasphemy putting biscuits <laughs> in the Yorkshire tea up here. Or you've, got to, you've got to have it pure. <laughs> pure oh, Yorkshire, mate. <laughs> that's so good. Yorkshire tea, but you can't buy it in Yorkshire. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. <laughs> I love that. Uh, anything, any other questions, Trap? Uh, no, that's it. But if anyone does have questions, feel free to free to drop them, or um, you know, if you'd like to come up and have a chat, raise your hand. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So, uh, Tim, why don't you tell us about the, um, I guess, the styles of music that you've um, created for the MetaBeats collection, and uh, you know how you found that process compared to developing out a song was it similar to doing your um library music or um have you did you adapt a new a new style of writing for you know these these shortened loopable yeah. beats yeah i mean um i kind of true to what we've sort of talked about 10 minutes ago or whatever i i had a real kind of a uh, sort of uh I just gave it a really sort of open brief, you know, and um, I really found that the the whole sort of minute and a half thing and the looped thing was a really um, interesting sort of format to work with. And um, I was lucky enough to have like a few new bits of gear um, that uh, I've just got. Um, so um, I basically um, gave myself carte blanche and just sort of got some beats on the go. I've got, um, I just got a, a machiner, um, which was a new way, f way of working for me. So, um, and that really, that really helped um, just kind of get things going immediately really and uh so um yeah i just worked through them and um really the kind of styles of uh you know true to form uh <laughs> all over the place you know um again uh, you could you could see the musical you know because it's funny because i you know you often i often sort of produce music but i'm not musically trained like uh, Tim is and that, but the thing with some of so many of the NFTs, you can hear that, and um, the people who are real musicians, the amount of detail and key changes and amazing stuff they do when they're writing the short bits of music, which my brain can't comprehend. It's like, how the hell did you manage to change that and do that 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 many times in that period of time? And you actually seem to find this on a lot of your tracks. There's when I first, the first few you started sending me over, I remember there was like this sort of tempo. You had this tempo where you could get so much in and then still keep it in the right length. And uh, it was so interesting, man, listening to when musicians have done the NFTs compared to our sort of out-the-box elect uh, electronic producers. Oh, that's great, man. I, I, I um, yeah, I mean, like I say, the the format of the minute and a half. I was amazed myself as well how much you can get in there, and um, and if you sort of loop round all my tracks, they they 
all kind of loop round, you know, because I just sort of obviously you're hearing them go round in a loop. Um, they're all kind of, you know, I think the shortest one is sort of um, probably about, you know, um, just over a minute or something. But most of them are just under a minute and a half. Um, and uh, yeah, I just got to really kind of love the love that format and. Um, I was able to kind of, um, you know, do a lot of different stuff within that and uh, from track to track. Um, you're so, you know, I mean, you're so fast, you know, just when we've been in the studio, you just say, man, it could be something funky. And you're like within, you know, three or four little plays at the keyboard and getting the sound, we're off. But um, how much stuff did you kind of revisit? Like, do you think, oh man, I know I've got some really cool loops on the hard drive that I never kind of quite finished off. Did you do much of that? Uh, oh, I think there's probably a two or three yeah. at the moment, um, which are old, older ideas. Um, one of them that, uh, one I was, I mean, the all. All of the ones that I did revisit, all of all the two or three, um, were you know kind of reworked a bit. Um, there was one um, which you know I felt sort of uh, stylistically, it kind of sounded like it was from a slightly different era of what I did, um, and it was quite a sort of well-developed idea that it just hadn't found a home and. Um, that is also very cinematic, so I thought it would be, it would work as a as an NFT. Um, but most of them are completely completely new. Uh, a couple of them, a few of them, I used um, old drums. I mean, I've got this uh, session from. It's literally about fifteen years ago now. I went into this uh, studio off uh just off labrick grove um where i was living at the time and um i recorded i did a sort of uh, a really a really good studio called kensal town um and um i had some free time in there and i recorded a load of uh drums you know like just a load of grooves different grooves and stuff on this drum kit really well recorded and um I've had that session sitting on my hard drive um, ever, ever since, and I've used it. You know, it's just been so useful over time. But I used uh, some of those sessions, I thought, to sort of great, great effect with the NFTs. Um, but they, but, but they were in completely new projects, kind of thing. You know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, not not many. I sort of really most of my stuff was kind of completely brand new. Uh, that's talent ladies and gentlemen <laughs> you know what I mean it was quite when um, you know because I'm a lazy a lazy sod <laughs> at the best of times I don't know it doesn't sound like it but I but I am you know and uh, um, but to be given like uh, you know we had a time period um, in order you know to sort of deliver all these tunes and um so I kind of put myself slightly under the under the the whip or whatever. Um, uh -huh. Gave myself a day on each tune, and I'm more or less kind of stuck to that. Um, obviously, I, I did have to sort of come back after that day, but by the end of the day, you know, I had I had the idea there. I had I had I had them in the in the arrangement they were going to be, and um, um, so yeah, I tried to stick to that obviously there were kind of deviations from that along the way but um in a lot of ways i did manage to stick to that so uh it, again you know which was part of the exercise which i found really a great a great exercise to do yeah i was just saying right man i can't right, try and get one idea a day done you know, so you can walk away at the end of the day and know a bit of shuffling a bit of this a bit of that and be done but um, yeah, same principle. I always like to do that when, with these. It was uh, there was yeah. a few that I went back to and stripped out and like, no, nah, it's not good enough, not quite the right vibe or whatever. But 
yeah, it was. Uh, I like doing it like that. Just one at a time. Yeah, I mean it's good. I mean I've got this. Um, I mean I can get. I can really tunnel into a track, and, and even too much. I can spend fucking days on on mm-hmm. on. You know, you know, one section of a tune. If I'm not careful, and then I'll come back to it and think. Do you know that just sounds a little bit overdone now? But <laughs> yeah. um, but the other project I've got um, called uh, Zmatsutsi, which is a uh, like a Leeds based thing between me and uh, a guy called Joe Gill, um, and um, his kind of uh, philosophy um, is to go in and just like for a day, and I mean knock out kind of. Um, three or four or five ideas in a day and um more or less you know we'll come out of that day with with um at least kind of two or three of them pretty much done and and, um we've come up with some really amazing stuff and that was uh that was a bit of a revelation um to do that um um, and that kind of spurred me on with this as well uh doing stuff man there's um make sure there's a room on the left here called the artist feed so if you've got any releases band camp or anything you want people to be able to find you can drop it in that artist feed okay right brilliant yeah anything going on man put it in there and then people know about it and they can find it and discover everything yeah because man there's so so much amazing stuff you've worked with people to to track down and find out, you know, and uh, discover it all. Um, all right, question for you. Who was is the most out there, wacky sort of producer or artist you've worked with? Um, well, I'm going to have to say Lee Perry, aren't I? I mean, he, he worked with Lee, did you? I did. I, he done a remix for me, but I never met him. Oh, right. Well, he did a remix for me um, in the 80s. I mean, I'm talking... Um, 88 I think it was 88 and uh, I was signed to EMI at the time EMI <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, so I just watched that pistols thing the other day yeah. um, I thought I really enjoyed it but anyway um, yeah so um, so I went in the studio with Lee and uh, oh god it was it was amazing I mean he had he rocked up he had um like a chrome World War One helmet on, and um, and he had a pair of big sort of, of German army boots, and they were each painted with all these kind of inscriptions and um, different kind of patterns and stuff. And um, so he came in the studio and he put one boot on one speaker, one boot on the other speaker, and his chrome helmet in the middle, and then. Uh, he had this box of trinkets and he put all these kind of things all around the studio. And, uh, and he had this sort of sampling, little Casio sampling keyboard, a tiny little one, um, which he just got. And he had all these kind of, he had uh, things like, you know, a dog barking and then him going, connection, connection on one key. And all this stuff. And he just sort of um, put all this stuff, or you know, like, he put kind of the you know different samples on on the tune and uh did this like mad fucking dub mix i mean some of it is like really extreme um but i mean it was really uh you know it was it was it was either genius or it was <laughs> you know they, work, they, go, they go together don't they really let's face it there's the most oh, yeah, definitely. genius have got a bit of madness in them, <laughs> you know. That's yeah. what, uh, the, 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 something has to give to let them be that genius. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, he was really, he was really sweet though. He was a really, really sweet guy. He wasn't kind of, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't edgy particularly. He was just really kind of sweet, and <laughs> you know, he obviously he had something together, you know, even even with that. And uh, you learn from him. From it, from the experience of it, like the oh, the wackiness of mad, just doing that, the sample, mad sampling, and yeah, yeah, I mean, absolutely, and um, 
I mean, um, it was uh, yeah, t- a totally different way of approaching it than than what I had or what I, what I generally have. But um, but you can't you, you can't help but rub off on you, you know, when you're sort of in the studio with with people like that. But I mean, obviously with him, I mean, I was sort of I've always been mad into all his sort of black art stuff and all that. Um, <laughs> that era and um of stuff that he did and uh so yeah i mean i was i was i was all ears and eyes when i was when i was work, working with him uh brilliant yeah. uh yeah cool. so, I mean, he's definitely hands down the most mad person i've worked with <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say you actually the maddest person i've ever worked with but um <laughs> <laughs> not really <laughs> one of the most talented I won't give you that for sure oh bless you no, I, I was I was on my best behaviour then <laughs> so. come, on, come on you've got the Yorkshire tea out and everything so you must have liked me exactly exactly <laughs> we, got, we got on um, but man I'll tell you what honestly I could sit I'm sure all of us we could sit here and talk for hours because uh, you know I think I've got some stories and stuff but man you, I'm sure you've got so many more amazing things. That's one of the, the great things about this space, I think, Tim, that's going to uh, sort of make it work, the fact that there's so many of with stuff to share and some amazing stories, you know, and just yeah. crazy stuff, man, from uh, some of the people we've met and, you know, performed with. And, mate, it's going to be some be fun hearing about it. And Yeah, I mean, I can't wait to sort of learn more about people. I've been... Uh... You know, um, as I say, it's a bit slowly sort of edging my way in, um, you know, due to being just sort of quite busy, really. But um, obviously, this is a long term thing. And, uh, you know, I expect to sort of start, you know, learning more and more about who's involved and, you know, what's going on. Yeah, it's a nice thing because it's, again, you know, we're, any new platform, Especially when you're older, it's kind of a bit of, oh, God, I've got to do that now, right? Uh, what's this all about? You've got to look into it and that. Yeah, no, it's it's quite tough, you know. It is quite, but, uh, you know. It's... But the nice thing is, because there's sort of 54 of us and that, it's not like you've got to be in there every day, you've got to do this. It's, it's, and we all know each other up in and outside of it. So it's, it's kind of a pretty cool thing without that pressure of I've got to try and sell myself every single day of the week because I'm a musician on arse book and that, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, that's right. That's right. You know, and that's, uh, yeah. And another thing that's kind of pretty refreshing about it for me, really, um, because, you know, that whole kind of, uh, that sort of whole web two thing of, you know, trying to kind of get, you know, get us, get followers on in that format is, um, I don't know. It's it kind of drives me out a lot of the time. Actually, yeah, it's a pain in the ass, man. It's a pain in the ass, you know. Because realistically, you got like I say, you can have twenty or thousand followers, and you know, you put oh, I've got a new tune out, a little clip of it, and it's oh great, you know, four thousand likes. You know, you can go yeah. get it at Bandcamp, and like you got like three, four hundred people who truly, really follow you and buy your music. The rest of them are more interested, like saying what you're eating and what speedos you got on, and being able to get angry at it because you're doing something that's cool, or not be angry. At it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? There's just too much judgment and stuff, and all this. this yeah. Before people even want to engage, it's like they judge the picture and. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's right. Yeah. And where where are you living at? the moment tim on on web two are you uh predominantly on uh, like facebook or Bandcamp? like where where can um, we um link up with you facebook and uh twitter really um yep. but uh yeah main, mainly facebook i i i i um yeah i haven't got into i i'm sort of Instagram, I haven't really kind of, uh, you know, gone into all that much. You know, I am on Instagram and um, I do kind of like it um, in some ways more than Facebook. But um, 
I like sort of having a rant occasionally, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> Facebook's better for that. Um, Twitter's but, good for that as well. I love your rants uh, on Twitter as well. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, Twitter's good for that. So, um, yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm not kind of mad into it, you know what I mean? Um, I've... I've um, I've actually pulled back a lot from Facebook um, in terms of how I was sort of 10 years ago or something. Uh, but I guess... Yeah, I mean, most of the world has, I think. Yeah, that's right, exactly. Uh, but, um, you know, I've yet to kind of... You know, I haven't really kind of gone into anything else, so... Um, I just want to be in places that I want to be in, not because I have to be there to be fucking fit into society or whatever. Do you know what I mean? That's what's I say about it. Yeah. Kind of like, I never had to do that. You know, you used to be able to go around your mates and hear a record. And yeah, yeah, mm. well, mate, if you heard that, and then your mates are like, what's this? And then, then it's that, and then it's that. And magazines, and you know, don't get me wrong, I don't understand like the oldest fart in the world. But when you know what it's like not to have all this shit and that you don't actually need it, it's horrible mm. when you feel forced into or obliged to have to do it. When some of it doesn't suit your nature, you know, I'm, I like having a chat and all that, but really I'm pro- kind of private, you know, and you've got yeah. this stuff where it's like, hey, hey, this is coast and everything, yeah, yeah, we. and it's like, yeah, no, while you're down there, I'm going to go around here and rob your house, rob your studio, do you know what I mean? It's the f- yeah. football player syndrome, you're like, hey, they're off to the European Cup, let's go and rob their house. You yeah. Know, you're, you're advertising your everything from where you are and stuff and man i can remember like doing the chasm tip festival and it's amazing i love it i love it but man i can't can't leave the hotel as soon as i go on the beach or anything there's me and my wife and you know we're trying to chill and every five seconds someone wants a photo with no that's fair enough because that's that's then people wouldn't be have the job if it weren't for them but it gets so tiring you know, and then there's these girls pouting and stuff, and the missus is there, so, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, and in the end, we, we'll go back to the uh, hotel, and then on uh, Photoshop, she'll do a picture, she'll take a photo of me on the beach with my arm out with an imaginary friend. You know, <laughs> we'll go back and uh, just make it on Facebook. If you need a picture of me, just superimpose yourself and let me chill out for an hour on the beach, sort of thing, <laughs> you know. But, oh, um, yeah, man, it's... Uh, a problem with yours, Tim? No, no. <laughs> it's just, I don't get. Um, I don't get recognised. I mean, I've I've been. I have been a couple of times, but uh, they're from people that. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've got a really. I've had a really strange one um, that somebody recognised me from my band Doghouse Derelicts, who, like, as far as I'm concerned, like nobody knows, you know. And this bloke said. Uh, Hey, you are you and you Tim from Doghouse Derelicts, aren't you? And I was like, just, just like, I, I, it still mystifies me to this day how how you know I got recognised as that because no, I don't, I you know, I don't get recognised at all. I mean, I've even um, you know, like I've been on stage um, and uh, not been recognised um, by audience members afterwards, you know. Um, probably someone standing down in front <laughs> no <laughs> it's not a quite it's not a problem i get a lot you know um so yeah no oh, man I've, I've had a couple when I, I i had blonde hair and uh we were at heathrow flying off somewhere and i'm like yeah i'm gonna go you know i've got to go and get some stuff and boots da, 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 da. anyway so off i go anyway these two girls sort of they clock me as i'm sort of going into the boot shop and i can see them look at me and all that and like start talking to each other like, Go in there, get me stuff and that. Come out there, oh, nip me in the loo. And I can see him hanging around. I come out, and they're like looking at me, and I walk past them. Like, excuse me, excuse me. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, just get it over with. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you David James? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, go. They thought I was a fucking football player. <laughs> like, <laughs> didn't even know who I was. I was like, no. You know what I mean? Oh, oh mate. And then I had. Um, I was on holiday in Mallorca, and this guy's, I'm at the bar and that, like, chilling and having a coffee and stuff, and the guy keeps looking at me, and he's like, 
uh, is from Birmingham in England, and he's like, all right, and I'm like, all right, like that, and sort of quick sort of hello and all this. Next day, all right, like that, and he keeps tapping the side of his nose. I'm like, yeah, what are you doing, man? It's like, it's all right, Stan, like that, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> <isn't> <laughs> <laughs> it's an I'd stand. Your secret's safe with me, mate. Your secret's safe with me. Like that. And he thinks I'm this football player who speaks like that from Birmingham. And the whole time I've been speaking to him like normal. And I'm like, listen, do you really think I'll go on holiday and put on a London accent when I come from Birmingham just to, so that no one knows that I'm Stan Collymore, who I'm not? <laughs> oh mate he just wouldn't have it that I weren't this guy that he comes from the same town as him mate well, you do, do meet some uh, <laughs> some strange I, I had a I did have a funny one and this is gonna you know I'm gonna sort of uh, sounds like a bit of a name drop here but I was um, I was because you know I was playing with Ian Brown for like eight years and um, we were out in Japan and um, we met uh, Liam Gallagher in this Japanese restaurant. And um, Ian sort of uh, goes to sort of introduce me to him. And he went, oh, yeah, yeah, we've met one, we've met. And I was like, no, because we hadn't met. And I think I'd remember that. So I went, no, no we haven't, mate. And he went, yeah, 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 we have, mate. You know, your gangster film and that, you know. And he thought I was fucking Jason Statham. Like, he <laughs> literally thought I was Jason <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I probably look like his uh, sort of ugly older brother or something. Ugly <laughs> looking brother. <laughs> yeah, no, that happened, man. That happened, you know. Hilarious. Oh, uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Honestly, man, we're gonna have so many cool stories for it. So, right before we're gonna wrap this up, guys, um, anyone got any questions for us? Wave your hand if you got any questions. Big hi to everyone anyway for sitting in with us as usual. I'm so pleased you've uh, got introduced to Tim. He's absolutely so. He's... Yeah, nice one, everyone. Thanks for listening. Uh... Oh yeah, man. So you guys, like I said, so many cool. It's the start of I think all the people we've got in here. You know, they've got so many mad stories that are going to entertain people and keep on triggering more from each other and stuff like we have about the recognition thing and stuff. You know. So, it's so so pleased you're coming here, man, and uh, yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. I've really enjoyed it. It's uh, it's nice to spout. Always <laughs> nice to spout. <laughs> yeah. And uh, great to meet you, Trav, as well. Likewise, Tim. Thanks for thanks for coming in, man. Nice one. Such a pleasure. Yeah, Tim, and, and Trav's always around if you need any help with not about and that with tea space and all that sort of. Thing. Even in here, Discord and that. He's, uh... Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And I'll try and do it um, perhaps like really early in the morning for me. So that might be a decent time for you if I do it <laughs> rather than now, which is. Don't worry about uh... him. He, he likes it like this. Don't worry. Yeah, I don't sleep much anyway. He's, oh. in, he's there in his pants and crocs. He's, uh, <laughs> that's what he does this time in the morning. His grand, he stays with his grandma and he. Just sits around having breakfast this time in the morning. He's a bit early, but he, he likes that look. Yeah. Even when he's shot. It's cold at the moment. I've got socks under my crotch. Uh, uh, you've gone for the German look. Socks and yeah. sandals. <laughs> nice. Rock, in it? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I had socks and crocs. I don't know yeah. where that comes from. Well, you know, it sounds, it sounds kind of right, you know. Well, wherever, know. wherever it comes from, it should have stayed there. <laughs> <laughs> you can go back there now. <laughs> yeah, go back. Where you come from? Get out of here. It's not acceptable behaviour. Anyway. <laughs> I can still redeem myself. The sun hasn't come up yet. No one can see. <laughs> the sun hasn't come up. Now, where are no. you? Where are you? Where did you say uh, you were? East coast of Oz. Yeah, where? Oh, near Brisbane. Brisbane, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, lovely, man. Loads of nice spiders out of that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Gold Coast and that. Yeah, yeah. Love it. No, Brisbane's really cool, man. It's my second favourite place after Melbourne. I must admit, really cool people there. Yeah, I've done it. Oh, yeah. 
shows out there myself. Yeah. Well, I yeah. think uh, Love you. one of my all-time favourite Aussie gigs was in Brisbane. It was just like I couldn't even couldn't even tell you. It was so good. It was, it was just awesome. It was like I don't know. It was almost like these older band shops or houses town buildings or something it was fucking crazy but yeah really cool town man. right Trav yeah definitely let's wrap this up my friend alright thanks for coming everybody are you going to sing for us or anything oh no I haven't warmed up I don't want to injure myself <laughs> good good we need you for later <laughs> yeah <laughs> alright people have a good Thursday wherever you are and uh, we will catch up with you again soon. I'm sure we've got Rick to come. Uh, no, not. What day is it? No. no. 24 hours for Rick to. Uh, okay, okay. Well, listen, have a good one, people, and let's catch yeah. up soon. Thanks Thank again, Tim. Yeah, cheers, man. All right, I'll see you soon. All right, man. Talk soon. Talk soon. Thanks, all guys. Right, thanks, all. Bye. Bye.